Logroño, Sibiodoro ostensibly vanished from the real record after about 1605. The documents that date before then, I think, uh, are credible. There's a first-hand account of the, the governor, Juan Aldrete, uh, who was the, um, the brother-in-law of, of Juan de Salinas, the founder of Logroño, and he said it was in a very broken country with many ravines and waterfalls. Um, and I'm sure it, it's like that because again and again it says uh, in the record how difficult, how, how much hardship it was to actually get to these places. Uh, Jean-Paul and I, and together with the professor, um, racked our brains over this for years. <laughs> trying to guess where uh, Le Grand and Civil Oro would be, um, certainly not close to any population centers, or they would have been found, uh, not within areas that are agricultural. Again, they would have been found. So what we did, we selected the um, thinking that Le Grand and Civil Oro would be remote areas, hard to get to, uh, and probably in high countries. So we took the center of the Kurdikou. So that's what we've been working with, that, that 208,000. The LIDAR, I think, will be very important. We could find the road uh, going to the thing. Remember, it was in use for 30 years, so they would have been, um, yeah, taking, taking supplies in and out. Uh, it would have been a, like a donkey road, probably they're taking some carts in, um, and uh, yeah, so uh, uh, taking supplies in for the, the village. Yeah. And because these things were gold centers for 30 years, you're going to have lots and lots of gold uh, just in, in the waste. So. Would there be tailings, piles of... of uh or whatever on the ground. Oh, yeah. Might show up in the yeah, yeah. So there'll be excavations, probably a number of pits, uh, rock piles, um, you know, rock dumps, um, waste dumps, um, you know, if they did get underground in a, in a fairly major way. And these were regarded to be very rich mines, so there should be, you know, piles of rock. Uh,